Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shamira Benson, one part of Team Benson, and we are continuing our harvest spree so that we can get our garden fertilized after we harvest it. So let's get going. Okay guys, so first I would like to say a big welcome to all of our new subscribers. I'm excited to see you guys here and excited to have you watch me garden. <laughs> I will be gardening all year long. I do, I garden in the summer when it's really hot, in the winter when everybody else is probably under snow. So right now, and then the spring and the fall are just the happy times. Right now we have a lot going on in the garden that I've been trying to get through harvesting if you guys have been watching my videos because we want to fertilize the garden and in order to do that I need to get all of the things that need to be harvested out of it because if we do it beforehand then everything smells like fish fertilizer and that doesn't smell great. So we have done this side, most of the greens, now we need to get like the peppers, eggplants and whatever else, probably some celery so that then we can have some space and get things fertilized. So let's go. And if you guys haven't heard, we are trying to get to 15K for subscribers. We are getting so close. We're over 14 now and we'll be giving away a Vego garden bag mug. So make sure you guys are subscribed and you're watching the videos and don't forget to hit the like button. All right, let's start with our broccoli. Okay guys, so our broccoli is currently putting out a ton of shoots because it wants to go to flower. And we took the main heads, so now we just have a ton of broccoli shoots. Like look at that, that is crazy. So we're gonna go in here and let's see how many we can get. Okay, so not a bad little harvest. We just got a couple in here. We are gonna mix this with the cauliflower and it's gonna be like a stir fry. So with this and the cauliflower, we'll have enough. Now guys, one thing I also grabbed are some broccoli leaves. Now, if you guys are not new to my channel and you've seen a couple videos, you know that normally the broccoli leaves I reserve for my worms, but I do use a couple every year to make my green powder that goes into our smoothies. And all that is is I just wash these up, dehydrate them, and then I just blend them down. Normally I do a combination of broccoli leaves and Brussels sprout leaves. It just adds a bunch of vitamin K to your fruit smoothie and you can't even taste it. So now we are going in here for the cauliflower heads. We're gonna pull both cauliflower heads because it is time to pull them. As you can see, they're trying to separate and we also need to get this soil ready for some other things. So guys, I don't take the roots out of my um, plant, like my planters or anything like that. I leave the roots in there so I just cut this at the base then I fed all of the leaves to my worms, and now I'm left with two amazing cauliflower heads. I'm excited about this. This is really great. You know, they may not be the biggest, but I can use one of these with the broccoli for stir fry, and then the other one, like the bigger one, I could just roast that one and that's another side. That's two meals. Gotta love it. So now we're moving on down to this section here. Now we had a ton of shishito peppers last night for dinner um, from what was in the refrigerator and now I'm looking on here guys and we have so many more. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the shishito peppers off of both of these plants or all three of these. I'm gonna see what we have and see how many we can get. Okay, so not a bad little harvest just for me not even realizing that there was more shishito peppers on there. Now there is a problem, I'm going to show you these, how they're all kind of dried up. And they're dried up when they're really tiny. Um, this was on the smaller shishito pepper plants, the ones that this is their first like flushing. Actually, I think it's their second flushing. This right here is from lack of water. Now they're kind of tucked in there underneath that big tomato and they're in smaller pots. So when it rained, it didn't really get them soaked. <laughs> so these ones dried up. But don't worry, now these don't have enough flavor to me, for me, and they're not thick enough for me to add them to like our dishes, um, like when we just saute or blister some shishito peppers, but this will bulk up the chili powder that we're making. So, and just add like a little bit of a uniqueness to it. So what I'll do is I will 
let these dry out, completely dry out with the hot chilies, and I will add this to them. You also might be able to find some seeds in here too, especially the red ones if you're trying to save seeds. Now this happens when it dries up, like it doesn't get like enough water, and it also happens just towards the end of its season, like when it's getting ready to go dormant, this will happen too, but don't worry, you can still use these peppers. Now guys, the other thing I picked was Miss Eggie's first little eggplant of the season. Usually she puts off like one and then she'll put off a bunch. So what I do with this one typically is whatever else I have in the garden that is maybe like beans or radishes or whatever else, I'm going to roast this little guy with. So we have our cauliflower and it is going to be a cauliflower eggplant roast and that will be just a side dish for whatever that we're eating. But guys, I found something that I think is hilarious because I didn't even know that it was there. So let me show you. So guys, if you remember below my big beef steak, which is putting off tomatoes I'm excited about, I planted radishes. Now, I didn't notice this because it's hard to get down up in here, but do you guys see that? You guys see that little guy over there? It is a random radish the things that hide in your garden. Now luckily, we did not eat the other radishes that I pulled from that pot already because I was waiting for that cauliflower because I wanted to add the radishes to the cauliflower too when I made the roast, or like the roasted veggies. So what we'll have is cauliflower with radishes and the one eggplant, and that will be an amazing side dish. We just put a little like olive oil or avocado oil, salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of garlic powder, put that in the oven at like 400 degrees, let it roast, and it is going to be delicious. And if we're having like a, a milk mill, I add Parmesan cheese, and that makes it even greater. You guys see the greatness going on in this basket already? How excited is this? Now, in the attempts to not overwhelm myself, I'm only gonna grab two more things, because right now I'm just grabbing things that we're gonna be eating for the rest of the week. So, let me show you what they are. I'm gonna grab the Swiss chard. I'm gonna grab a bunch of these leaves, whatever we don't eat. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the freezer. And then I'm also gonna grab this bolting lettuce right here. Okay guys, so we got tired of eating lettuce. <laughs> so most of this was looking a little worse for the wares and it went to our worms. But this top part, I'm going to add to our Caesar salad. Um, we're doing smoked salmon um, with the Caesar salads. And we're gonna do that probably for lunch. So this will give it a little bit different texture because we had a ton of romaine lettuce. So we have so much romaine lettuce. I like to add just a couple different types of lettuces in there just to kind of mix it up. Now guys, I'm not gonna be one of those channels that tell you how to feed a family of 10 because I don't have a family of 10, but I will say, if you have a family of 10 and you're trying to feed them with the small space garden, gross Swiss chard. Look at this. This is insane amounts of Swiss chard, guys. And these leaves are so huge. Like, they are the size of my head. <laughs> so big. So, if you are trying to feed a lot of people, Swiss chard is the way to go. All right, guys. So that is the basket for my aesthetically pleasing thumbnail. <laughs> and yeah, this is a lot. So this is what we're going to eat in a week, essentially. Maybe like a week and a half. Probably like a week and a half, especially with this much Swiss chard. So I'm gonna do a lot of different meals. My Swiss chard, I'm going to saute it. And then I'm also going to do cabbage rolls, but instead of using cabbage, I'm gonna use Swiss chard and do that. So, and fill it with like a meat rice situation. So that's what I'm doing this week. This is what I harvested and that's what I'm doing with it. I hope that you guys are harvesting greatness out of your gardens. And if you're still covered in snow, I hope that this is just the amount of garden green to give you that energy to go start your spring garden inside with some starts and some seeds. <laughs> so until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.